Hello. Okay, everyone. Ready for today? Yeah. All right. Sheena Allen. La, 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 la. <laughs> Sheena. Sheena. Ho- hold, so, hold on a you second. You are so beautiful. Thank you. I, I'm serious. No disrespect, but you are so beautiful. Thank you. I, it, like, for real, she was trying to tell me, like, all of the stuff that you have accomplished in your life. And I know that this is a very male thing to say, but I have to be honest. What did I say, Regina? She's so beautiful. Oh, yeah, she, yeah. Bring her home. <laughs> I actually was, I should I should have told her to come in person. Are you married? I am not married. You have a boyfriend? Wait a minute, I, time out. I, <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, Regina. Just, okay, I'm over here, Regina. sorry. Sorry, no, just let me, let me get Regina. my cup. Sheena, can I ask you a question? Sure. So, you know, you have a bank and um, I have a multimedia company. And right now, we are trying to make sure that our people come together as a whole. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a possibility. No, I'm just joking. All right, Dave, better podcast. Let's go. <laughs> uh, have you ever, are you a fan of Nelly? I am. Nelly had a song yourself just playing. Unless you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you are a hey. hot mess. I, hey, sh- listen, seriously, if you want me to cut that out, I'll cut that out. But we've been drinking. And I really do. Th- and I really, <laughs> I really this do. Th- it would be a good time. I really do think you're beautiful, though. Well, it's a Mississippi thing. Hold on. I saw. What's Capway? That's her company. Oh, no, I was going to say, because if it was, I thought she was hyphenating her name and she was lying about being married. <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, oh, you'll give me shot. Oh, shit. What part of Mississippi are you from? Terry. Oh, shit. You know what I respect about you? Because most people from Terry say they're from Jackson. Nope, I'm from Terry. That's a and, good girl. and she's a graduate of Southern Miss. Uh, Brett Favre. Yep. Golden Eagle. I've been through Southern Miss, Banner. You ever been to Southern Miss? No, nah, I didn't go down there much. I went down there, but not to the school, though. Norris played basketball at Southern Miss. Career? I used to run through there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. JJ's Record Mart is where I used to go. I didn't go to. I didn't go there. I wouldn't go to the college. I would go to the record store when I was down there. But no disrespect, though, love. You You are a very beautiful woman, and we are very proud of you. No disrespect at all. Um, my number is 601. Yeah. My number is 601. <laughs> uh, 407. I mean... You're surprised that I start spitting the real number. Uh, if I spit out some numbers, um, like just... You see your 601 you know, number? You know these phones crippled me so much. I be trying to remember your mu- number just in case I ever went to jail. And I still don't remember it. Well, what yeah, I was going to say, I told her 601-407. And then as Regina talks, I'm going to spit out numbers and she could come back and put them together on her own and give me a call. All right. See, I hey, like, Scott, he going to have them. People make fun of me because I still have my 601 number even though I moved away years ago. But I kept my 601 no, number. No, I, I keep the 601 number and I try to keep a tag. I try to keep my, uh, my the Mississippi same tag. Yeah, yeah, I do. I keep a tag on one of my cards and I have my 601 number still. I'm very, very proud like of you. Flex, <laughs> like Flex, like Flex, bank can get you multiple cars. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Regina. I'm very smart with my money, though. Very, very smart. Oh, I'll let Sheen introduce herself. Rich people are the cheapest motherfuckers on this planet. Very, very true. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And people that want to be rich, We're cheap, not too. Cheap. We are frugal. Oh, frugal. No, I'm cheap. You're conscious with your money. Man, I'm very conscious. I'm cheap. Except on, <laughs> except on my products. I spend money on the things that make me money, but everything else I ain't spent. You know how hard it was for me to buy that truck? I had to go. I, I called Mr. Moody and he told me it was okay. That's the only reason why I bought that truck. And you love that truck. You actually think it's yours, don't you? Huh. Yes, you do. You, oh, that's what you told me. Oh, we got us a new truck. I just, you know. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't think you're cheap, though. Oh, he cheap as fuck. I'm cheap as fuck. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't know. You ain't cheap with me, so I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. That's why else. you will spoil no, bread. You, you earn it. Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, you earn it. You and Regina both. What you mean? It. I'm a spoiled brat. You know what I mean. How are we going? We got company. We can't no. act Hi, like that Sheena. in front of her. Hi, Sheena. Sheena. Hi, Sheena. Sheena, what city you stay in? Atlanta. Oh shit. He said a oh, word. Word. <laughs> All right, Sheena. What's happening? I'm I'm fresh to Atlanta. I moved my company here about a year ago. Lex, am I acting bad? I just think at this point, 
You should focus. I was going to read Sheena's intro, but you've talked through half of it. Or I mean, you've touched the points. So I think, Sheena, you can go ahead and give us an intro. Tell no, us no, about No, no, go that. ahead. Do, do, do it right, and I'll, I'm going to be quiet. I'm sorry. I mean, you... We've been drinking. I'm sorry. I've been drinking. Okay. Sheena Allen was born in Terry, Mississippi, and is a graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi, where she received a dual degree in psychology, bachelor's of science, and film, bachelor of arts in 2011. Sheena started her first company, Sheena Allen Apps, and bootstrapped the app company to millions of downloads. In 2016, she started her second tech startup, Capway, which gave Sheena the title as the youngest female in America to own and operate a digital bank. Uh, the fin- the fintech is that how it's pronounced the fintech, fintech? company yep the fintech company connects under <laughs> connects underserved millennials and Gen Z to today's cashless economy. In 2016, Sheena made her premiere, <laughs> and sh- and she started a documentary film that follows five women around on their non technical founder. Oh, nope, on their non-technical startup yeah. journey, Sheena. Help yep. me, please. Just, it's, yeah, so that's a lot. Thank you. This did it. Um, I think the last one is, it just talks about some accolades. So it's whatever. Forbes 30 on the 30, Inc. 30 on the 30, some more stuff. Cool. We'll talk about Sheena, it. Sheena, let me ask you a quick question before you start talking about your company. Um, coming from the places that we come from, like what what gave you the vision to to push further than than your surroundings and the things that were around you. Because I'm trying to find the common goal in all of us that pushes us because there's so many distractions. And I, I, I joke a little bit, and I try to make my show be uh, comfortable to everybody. But uh, I just want you to know, first of all, how proud I am and how proud we are of you and and your accomplishments. So, like, what, what was it that, that made you push further than just doing what the average person does? Um, I credit my granny a lot. Um, you know, being from being from the Deep South, being from Mississippi, I, most people in my family definitely are, like, nine to five. They don't really do anything outside of the norm. Um, but my, my granny always pushed us to do, I mean, I, I was raised by my parents, but I, I grew up a lot, spent a lot of time with my granny, who always pushed us to do something very different. What's granny's from, name? Say her name. Frankie. Frankie White. My granny. Um, always pushed us, push us to do more. And I don't know, I, was, I always grew up wanting something different. You know, Terry is like, it's like a cycle. It's like you grow up in Terry, you marry somebody from Terry. You go back to Terry. You have, it's like a cycle. And I was like, I don't know. I grew up just like, I do not want to do this. I mean, I love I love the silk, but I just, I didn't want to, I want something different. I just feel like nobody, I, even from a young age, I was always like, nobody's going to come save us. Mm-hmm. So somebody got to do the job. So white Jesus ain't coming to save you? Nah, he ain't coming. Good girl. Ooh, he, he coming. <laughs> Good answer. Um, why tech? Um, so I had an idea for a mobile app when I was in college. So I didn't go to college for, for tech. I was in college, as I mentioned, for psychology and film, and I minored in marketing. So I actually wanted to go into film. I wanted to, I wanted to bring back very cre- a creative sense to um, movies and music videos. Like, that's what I wanted to do growing up. And I, I used to draw and I used to paint, so I was really into, like, the arts. Um, but I had an idea for a mobile app my senior year of college, and was like, I'm going to figure it out. And I reached out to a few people and everybody was like, I have no clue how to code. So I was like, cool, I'll figure it out myself. And I, by my third app, it was doing like millions and millions of, millions of downloads. And I just decided then, I was like, you know what, Mississippi is great, but I'm not going to get where Hold I want to be. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just stun on us really quick? She what? just slid by, oh, yeah, we just had millions and millions. Millions worth of and doubt. millions. You know, just, <laughs> that ain't shit. What? You know, we just had millions yeah. and millions worth. Go ahead and talk that sim shit, girl. You from the fucking crib. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, unfortunately, the Mississippi didn't have the, the infrastructure. Like, we didn't, it was, like, no money as far as, like, BC. There was no, like, real investors. Um, they didn't even have accelerators. We had like one, they call themselves a, an investor group, but not really. So Anthony Dixon, shout out to AD. 
Um, hey, got drafted by the 49ers. So Anthony went to Terry High with me. I've known Anthony for a while. And Anthony had got drafted by the 49ers, which is this is the craziest thing. It's just like, I guess, timing and fate. And um, I hit him up and I was like, yo, you're like in the hard Silicon Valley. Like, can I come out, you know what I'm saying, and stay with you? Mm-hmm. And Anthony being Anthony, he was like, look, the lifestyle I live, like you might not want to, you might not want to come out here <clears throat> <laughs> and chill with me. And I was like, Sounds look. like us. <clears throat> But I was like, look, I was like, I'll go in the corner. I'm going to go to my meetings. You won't even know that I'm there. And he was like, okay, cool. And I moved out to Silicon Valley. So that was my my first um, step into like the the big boy world of, of technology. And that was the beginning of my first tech company. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, so so tell us about the bank. Let's let's let's, let's concentrate. Yeah, so Capway started the company, um, as you and I both know, being from central Mississippi. There's, I want to say there's, for every one bank, there's 3.5 alternative, banking alternatives, which is usually like a payday lender, check cashing, title loan, um, all the things that they listen to a hole that we can never get out of. Um, also, Mississippi has um, more banking deserts, um, mm-hmm. I think, than anywhere else. So I think Edwards, Mississippi, for example, does not have a bank in the entire city of Edwards. I want to say maybe Durant doesn't have like a bank in the entire city of Durant. Um, so when I started the company, the company was really for two main reasons. It was the fact that we were moving to a cashless economy, mm-hmm. meaning that you know, you're going to walk into a, a restaurant and it's going to be a sign that says, you know, we don't take cash. And then the other side of that was the fact that millennials and Gen Z are really big into things that you can't pay cash for. So like Netflix, Spotify, um, catching an Uber. And when I thought about all the people in my community, including like my friends, my family, who were still mainly cash based, I was like, society and the economy is going to completely leave them behind if somebody doesn't come up with something that works for them. Mm-hmm. And traditional banking does not work for everybody. Um, you know, they charge you minimum balance fees, which I think the stupidest fee ever. Because if I don't have enough money already, you charge me a minimum balance fee. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really help my situation. Um, and I wanted people to say, look, I, I have access to something that's going to give me a fair chance at financial health, even if it's not a bank in my town. And that was really the beginning of Capway. So um, we do a lot of things. It's the, I said the core of what we do is, is banking, but we also do ranging from financial literacy. We help people forecast out. Um, I'm not a big advocate of budgeting. I think budgeting is important, but I think for a lot of people, we stress to them to budget. But I'm sure we all know that one person who lives paycheck to paycheck and they can make $10 last a whole week. Right. Um, so people who, a lot of people budget by default. They're not budgeting because, you know, that's what some financial literacy course said. Um, I think what's more important is that we teach people to forecast their money out. So if I have $500 in my bank account and I see some new J's and it's like, oh, I can afford some J's. No, I got 500 but if you forecast your money out, you might see that, hey, in three months, I'm actually going to have $2 to my name. Um, so it's much more important for me to show people that they can forecast their money than they can just budgeting it for like every paycheck. So <clears throat> core of what we do is banking, but we also have a comprehensive financial services that really help people to become financially healthy. All right. So quick, quick, quick question. In, in the times that we are in right now, um, and if you don't want to answer this question, it's fine. I don't want to ever put you in a compromising position. But um, in any way, is this focused towards your people? Oh, for sure. I mean, let me be wrong. Anybody can use Capway. It's not that it's only, it's not a Black-owned bank just for Black people. But, I mean, the point of where I start this company is because I looked at people who look like me, who systematic racism. Even now, yeah. people are always talking about, oh, we need equality. I'm like, no, nah, we need equity. That's a t- Equity and equality are two totally different things. Mm-hmm. Mine too. <laughs> so yeah, I don't. I'm not a fan of people who like, and that's not even not even calling them out in that way. You know, when Bank of America came out, it's like, are we gonna do a billion dollars towards like racial issues for over, over five years? So did you hear that Bank of America was started by a group of Italians for Italian people? Did you ever hear that? A lot of those banks were started for a certain group. It wasn't meant to be who they are today. But that's also why they went through some of the steps they went through. Like, if you look at the history of J.P. Morgan, like, J.P. Morgan has, has a history of discrimination. Um, Bank of America, who originally being who they were for. Hold on. This so has the- nothing to do with you. J.P. Morgan, 
fucking crackers. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, we yeah, Oh, no, wait, 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 sorry, sorry. And Drew Brees, fuck you. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> Her face does it for me. I'm, it's like I think I feel like she's so used to this though that it's like it's like another day, another day in the office. One, one more time, I'll pause you one more time. And can we drop the Drew Brees commercial here? All right, we're back. <clears throat> you can say fuck Drew Brees if you uh, want to. You know what? I, I, let me say, <laughs> no, don't, don't, let me don't say do this. it. Don't get into no, no, it. Don't get into it. I, I have friends. My brother, my brother, my brother T, I'm sure he's gonna listen to this event when it comes out. My brother T is a diehard Saints fan. And when, the, when that conversation happened, I remember he and I talked, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm just gonna ask a question, rhetorical, because it's me and him, but still rhetorical. And I said, I wonder, is he just actually racist or is he just uneducated? And my brother said, well, why would you ask if he's uneducated? I said, well, because his his reply or his his statement to this was, I don't want to disrespect the flag because my grandfather fought in the war. And I said, well, it's a lot of black people who granddaddy fought in the war, too. But his granddaddy came back a hero and our granddad parents came back still Negroes. So it's maybe he's just uneducated on the fact that just because your grandfather fought in the war and he came back a hero, black people was on the front line Can I ask and they question? fought in the war too. Can I ask you a question? <clears throat> mm-hmm. if, um, if I saw a TV sitting outside, right? Mm-hmm. And it was a nice TV and I picked that TV up and didn't know that it was stolen, are they going to take my black ass to jail? That question. So fuck Drew Brees. Whether he's unfucking educated <laughs> or a fucking racist cracker, fuck you, Drew Brees. Let's drop that commercial again. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So let, let, we, we're going to hone in. Um... What what are some things that you can honestly tell people about your online banking and what are some of the reasons why they should trust your company and go with you and where can they find out about no, some more information? Yeah. Um, so a lot of things we do that you'll see from other Neo banks, it's sort of like the no overdraft, no minimum balance, um, remote capture, meaning you can just take a picture of your check on your phone to make deposits. One thing that really stands out about Capway, um, well, two things, let me take, take that back. Two things that really stand out. I can go much deeper, but I'm going to stick to two things. One is the way that we do our savings. So the average American doesn't have $400 to their name. Um, emergency happens. They have no clue how they're going to come up with the money. So the way that we do at Capway is every time you swipe your card, your change is rounded up. Um, and it goes into a, what we call a savings bucket. Well, that bucket, you can create up to 10 different gold buckets. And that can be, hey, I need $400 for a new tire. I need to save $150 for a new textbook. Um, And you can disperse out your change into the different buckets. But what makes it a community piece, which is really important for me when when I built Capway, was you can be, you know, halfway to a goal of, you know, hey, my $150 for a textbook. And you can actually ask for help. And people from the community are in general can come and actually help you reach your goal because they're seeing that you're actually working um, towards reaching the goal that you need for for whatever purpose. Right. So the community piece was real big for me. And the, the second piece, I won't say it's a particular feature of Capway. I will say it's more about the team who founded Capway. So I will argue anybody any day from any bank that nobody understands the space the way that I do. And the reason I understand the space is because I've taken my grandmother to a check cash in place. I've seen friends and family go in to um, get payday, payday lender, I mean, payday loans. And most people just don't understand that market. A lot of people will come back and say, oh, well, you shouldn't take out a micro, I mean, a payday loan because it's high interest. And I'm like, well, do you realize that some people take that loan out because that's the difference in them feeding their kids or not? Or that's the difference in them keeping their lights on or not? It's not that easy for everybody. Right. And so... 
I wouldn't say that the main thing about Capway that makes it different is a feature. I would say it's understanding the people who we're serving. Serving makes the huge difference in who we are. So what's the website that they can go to to check you out? Capway.co, C-A-P-W-A-Y dot C-O, or you can download our mobile app in the App Store to search Capway. We are really proud of you. Okay, love? Thank you. I appreciate it. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you, Regina, for everything. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right, now. Yeah, be good. All right. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. Today's topic, and today's topic is about music. And we're going to talk about what music means to us and possibly what it should mean to everybody, you know. And, um, you know, the effect that music had and who had those types of effects on us as artists. Um, I think so many people nowadays get into music just for money. And they don't really care about the culture. And that's partially our fault, I I believe. You know, and I'm not speaking for anybody else, but um, just music in general. Um, Corey, what's, what's up, what, what is your first uh, memory of music and, and how it really affected you in a, in a way that you, you still can recall, like, even today? Whitney Houston's Greatest Love of All was the first musical piece that I actually, like, it, it hit me as a kid. Wow. Um, and a lot of that, and, you know, as a kid, you don't know that someone else produced it, someone else wrote it, all that. You just know you hear something that that rings with you and the delivery of it, the passion in it moves you. And that song, hands down, became my favorite song even to this day just because of the whole composition of it. What's so crazy is that's how I actually felt as well about the original version of it. You're talking about how I was doing it? No, Corey. Oh. Oh, Corey. Greatest oh, that's love crazy. of all. Asking. Um, Regina, what was your first? Um, Who's the original? George Benson? Yes. I didn't. Look. Did you know that? I, that was in like, I, that was like a 70, what, 77, 78, something like that? that wow, I out. didn't know that. Yeah. It was powerful like that, too. Really? Mm-hmm. So w- what was your first just recollection of music? When we were younger, my mom used to play... Um, uh, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes that wake up when we were sleeping. She would play it to wake us up. That wake up everybody when we're sleeping. And that song, um, I don't even know how old it is, but it, the lyrics still reign true today. <coughs> and that, it was really a powerful song. The world's changed so very much from what it used to be. There's so much hatred, war, and poverty. Damn, Regina. I know that's that's basically talking about what the fuck we going yeah. through right now. But finish. I'm, I'm not even interrupt. Um, that was, that was my song. Ali, with the first song, it was um probably that I really was like, yo, this is that I did I really recollect that I was trying to make them play. It was probably Mama said knock you out. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm about to say too short. Nah, you gotta think. When that came out, I was like, I got a hold of too short probably after shortly after that mm. because. It was the album cover with the do- with the dogs, the cartoons on it. That's what made me want to listen to it. So I snuck it and grabbed it. Mm-hmm. But like the mama said, knock you out, LL. I might have been maybe like four or five at the time. And yeah, that was probably the first one. Scott, you? Scott, what was the first first album that you can remember? We can't hear you, bro. I think you muted. You saw the first song that I ever remember here? No, that the song that had a real that, effect that, on you. Hmm. I would have to say uh, the message, from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Why that? When they were describing New York, because growing up in a small country town in the South, music was a vehicle for us to travel because mm-hmm. we couldn't go anywhere. We were stuck in our neighborhood. So to hear him say "broken glass everywhere," people pissing on the streets. You know, they just don't care. It painted a picture of a place that we could only, you know, that gave us a, a, another attachment to a place that we could only dream about. Right. So for me, that mu- that song was like an escape to New York. You know what I'm saying? Because we were, you know, how the stereotypes are, Southern people, we country, we never been nowhere. And for a lot of us that couldn't travel, that was our only means of getting out. So the, me- the message is, is a song that I really remember. I was like, yo, that's some real shit. You know, it just took me there. 
So it's crazy. I I, I know people are going to be surprised that I say this, but uh, my mom said when um, one of my favorite songs, and like I think my my third or fourth favorite group um, is The Police. Yeah, and my mom, my mom said that uh, everything, everything she does is magic. Is one of my favorite songs ever. Matter of fact, we sampled it. We just hadn't hadn't used it yet. And my mom said we were in Sears in the Metro Center. Uh, that was a mall in Jackson. And she said that I went and found. You know how they had the speakers hidden in the mall. She said I went and found the speaker because I was trying to find out where that music came from. And to this day, like I, that song still means the fucking world to me. It's something about that song, you know. Um, and I, I, I never forget that. That was uh, my mom told me. She told me that story. She said I was like I was little, and she couldn't find me. And she said I heard that fucking song, and I literally was going through the clothes, and I went and found the little speaker in the corner where that song was coming from, you know, and. Um, you know, one of the things that I said about the God Box and one of the reasons why I did the God Box the way that I did is because I remember, I, people don't know this, but Goody Mob's album, Soul Food, was the reason why I didn't turn the street way. Because, like, I was sort of in the middle of figuring out what I was going to do with my life. And I had heard that two members from the, the Goody Mob's was a part of something, you know, um, called a Robin Crew. And, like, they were doing it for real. So, like, Goody Mob's album, Soul Food, didn't really reflect what some of them were doing in real life. And for them to choose to give people the spirit and the soul of the South, like, Goody Mob made me feel the good part of church, at least, because I think y'all are pretty clear about how I feel about church now, but... Goody Mob made me feel the way that the good part of church makes you feel, that warm part that church made you feel. And Goody Mob album made me feel that way. And literally, they were the reason why I became, I guess, somewhat the better better. Because some, <laughs> would, would, some people would say maybe the David Banner that I became was, wasn't the good one. But to me... And the choices that I had, that was actually really the good one. That was an amazing project. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Goody Mob did that to me. And I was I was on the phone with CeeLo. And I, and I talked to him about it. And CeeLo was like, bro, we were in a trance. He was like, that time when they was doing that, good, that Soul Food album, he was like, they were, it wasn't even, I won't say it wasn't them, but they were literally in a trance. They was on something else, spiritually. You know, um... Tommy Nova, I want to ask you the same question, but you don't have on your mic. So can you, yeah, if, if you mind, yeah, give you the, yeah. Like, tell us, tell us what that was for you living in New York. Like, what was, uh, what did music mean to you? And then I'm going to ask you the second question so so you won't have to come back again. All right, cool. Um, I think um, the record, I would say, one of the first records that I, that touched me would might be Naughty by Nature, Everything's Gonna Be All Right. Right. Um, back then, Tretch was like Jay-Z. He was like the best rapper out when like OPP and all of that was out. And he dropped a jewel, which was um, some get a little, some get none, some catch a bad one, some leave the job half done. That always stuck with me, and um, that was a dope record for many reasons. What was, um, if you had to pick an artist, because that's where we're going next, mm -hmm. if you had to pick an artist, and it ha doesn't have to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your favorite artist, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. pick an artist that like had musically a, a very big influence on your life. Um, One of the artists I would say that I really followed, yeah, the woo is so many, but I, if I had to pick a single one, I, I would say Nas. I, that's what I thought you was going to say the first that. time. Because yeah, 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 you remember, yeah. we had a debate about Nas. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, I first, yeah. When we yeah, first really yeah, got tight. Yeah. Like, why Nas? What was it about Nas? Um, it was just something. Besides his, uh, besides his father being from Mississippi. Besides that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was just something about, um, about, his, about his growth from, from project to project. It was just, and, and some of the things he was saying, and, and especially in that first album, it had a nostalgia to it, and it embodied the vibe of New York at that time. It was just like the same scene and everything we was going through 
it, it, you felt it. You felt. So I tell you a secret that that that, that you may not know, bro. Um, for the God Box project, mm-hmm. um, I always based how I wanted my albums to be like Nas' first project, mm-hmm. like not from a sound perspective, but there was it, that first album was so straight to the point. It wasn't no. Would you agree with that, bro? It wasn't no filler in that album. It was just like oh, everything, everything, like yeah, everything was. Mm-hmm. So like when when I think about like the God Box Two projects, that's why I was telling you it's got to be from seven to nine song. I didn't want more than that. On the first God Box, I would always I tried for thirteen because that was a symbolic number to me. But like that 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 first that Nas first album, bro, it was just. It didn't seem like it was no bullshit on no, there. It no, wasn't no, no. throwaway. Mm-mm, straight classic. Yeah. 